Hello folks, this is Kron here from The Great Work with another scientific literature review. Before we get into that, two quick, uh, two quick updates. First off, the last video we did on the sphenoid in the skull, I posted a thread about that, and that thread is now full of absolutely interesting scientific discussion and research by Snellgu. Uh, we got Apollo auxiliaries in here, Rafflecopters. Let me make sure I mention everybody, but if you have not missed Mewing, if you have not uh, gone and checked out the forum or specifically this thread right now, this is full of absolutely great discussion. And uh, I think we are, we're at a good point right now where we've moved past talking about the surface level and we've, you know, nailed down that this is what we need to be focusing on, at least in our opinions or my opinion. I won't, I won't put this on everybody. Secondly, um, the articles that I go over here, a lot of them are going to be hidden behind paywalls. Um, for the purposes of my videos, anything that I show, you can probably assume that I have gotten, you know, through a membership to the journal or from the author themselves or a membership to an educational institute. However, if you want to access the journals, you can look into something called Sci-Hub. And that is illegal. I don't care. And I don't think anyone should care either. It's immoral to hide this research behind very, very high paywalls. Um, so if you do ever need, you know, if, if you find, come across an article that I show you or someone else shows you and you want actually to get access to that article, you can look up Sci-Hub and you can probably get access to the article from there. So the first article that we're going to look at is bone remodeling to correct maxillary deficiency after growth cessation. Uh, of course, the links to everything will be here, or they'll be in the thread. Actually, I'll make it. They're going to be in the thread. Um, so the abstract for this is that this is a 22-year-old girl, which is generally assumed to be beyond, uh, you know, the puberal range. So that's not natural growth happening anymore. And uh, this this young woman did not want surgery. And so that they use a tongue appliance and slow expansion and also a reverse pull headgear in order to you know, get some growth out of her. And then they said after 24 years of active treatment, a positive overbite and overjet were achieved. So she had class three, which is an underbite. And then non-surgically over 24 months, they got uh, this young woman to a positive overjet. They said that the nasal labial angle also showed improvement. And non-surgical treatment of adult class three patients is a difficult procedure. However, this patient was treated non-surgically. And here we have the before image and the after before after here's the Ceph scan before after before and after and here's um the, the Ceph analysis I, I won't comment on the before or after results i i don't i see the deficiencies in relying on any sort of camera angles but um the Ceph's analysis also, John John Mew has discussed how that can be inaccurate as well. But the fact that they were able to achieve an overjet in a class 3 patient after growth cessation is something worth looking at, in my opinion. The second study here is the effect of tongue appliance on maxilla. So the, the, this tongue appliance was essentially one that um, was to prevent the habit of tongue thrusting. Uh, you know, not being able to move your tongue too far forward. And of course, if you prevent the tongue from moving too far forward, you're now applying force on the maxilla. And um, so what they say here is that it was successful. Um, the tongue appliance can move the maxilla in a forward position. Therefore, this simple appliance can be an alternate alternative method in protraction of the maxilla. Um, this Now, it is important to note that um, this study was done on cleft patients and these patients were young so between 7.6 and 9.8 years um, but it does show a correlation between the amount of positive you know anterior pressure applied on the maxilla and the forward growth of the maxilla and that's important to note in my opinion now this uh, third study is similar it's also in a child um, but what these are essentially showing is that giving the tongue an easier method this is, this is also um, using a tongue guard appliance. But you can see here that they're essentially giving the tongue an easier way to push against the maxilla. And by doing that, they are saying that they've achieved pos you know, positive forward growth. 
and better angles than they usually would have. You can see uh, that is a class three patient. And I would say for this case, for sure, that looks like a major positive benefit, a positive difference. And uh, this is this looks like a great treatment modality for growing children. And it's further evidence that the tongue definitely does play a role. The ability of the tongue to push against the maxilla does play a role. And like we discussed earlier, um, I think the discussion is going to shift more towards, is this just the maxilla reshaping or are we actually affecting the cranial base here more so, which is what I think is happening. But uh, the end result for this child was very nice. So we can be happy for him and the fact that he got good treatment rather than extractions. And uh, as we go into this fourth article, something I want to point out is that if you are uncomfortable with using Sci-Hub or uh, any sort of piracy, now, you know, if you live somewhere that that's illegal, you probably shouldn't do it. Don't go anywhere telling them, oh, you know, Quran from the great work said it was okay. That's on you. You make your own decisions. But if you are uncomfortable with that, usually if you Google the title of the paper, you might Google or DuckDuckGo or some other search engine, you'll probably be able to find more information at the very least. You can see this is an article stub. There's absolutely nothing of use here except for, you know, just the basic abstract. But if you Google this, then you can probably find more parts of the article, maybe even pictures from the article. And failing that, and especially if you want to cite the author, if you plan on publishing something where you're including the author's work, if you reach out directly to the author, their their contact information will be somewhere, even here. Send an email to them. The author is 99% likely to be very happy to send you their work. They want to send you their work. So if you can absolutely cannot find an article, reach out to the author. Okay, so here is uh, this Handelman article. Uh, the non-surgical approach and th this person is you know on the same kind of wavelength mindset of us as saying like the purpose of this article is to challenge the commonly accepted orthodontic paradigm which is what we do and there's no strict conclusion reached here he's doing a literature review same as we do and I'm not going to read the whole article for you but here is the gist of it the orthodontic specialty has been reluctant to accept expansion in most situations However, when the evidence-based literature demonstrates success in non-surgical transarch expansion in adults, it is time for a paradigm shift. This gentleman, or whatever, lady, is completely correct um, in recognizing and diagnosing the fact that the scientific literature on expansion clearly, clearly demonstrates that it is possible in adults. So any, any schools that teach that the adult palate can no longer be expanded are completely out to lunch. They're completely behind the curve because it's been demonstrated for decades now that uh, you can get expansion results in adults. And for our last article of the day, um, this is one of the reasons why I think it's so important for the community to, community to expand and why I'm putting in this much effort because this article is originally in Spanish. I do not... I cannot read Spanish. Um, so there is a, a immense volume of scientific literature that I cannot read. And there's a lot of, you know, literature in English that people in other languages cannot read. So that's why we need to cast the net as wide as possible so that we're not missing stuff just because of language gaps. Luckily, this one has an English translation. And they're pointing out the, the importance of what we're doing here with their conclusion that uh, studies show that evidence of enlarged nasal cavity following maxillary expansion. So um, they're saying, yeah, it's not just the teeth. It's not just the, uh, it's not just the alveolar ridge. When you do have maxillary expansion, you get the health benefits that come from it. One of the major ones being the expansion of the airway, and that will help with people with sleep apnea for sure. And, you know, even if you don't have sleep apnea or snoring, uh, chances are your airway is constricted. And that's why we all need to collectively look at how to expand it. And that's everything for the articles for today. Going forward, I, I'm going to try and do justice to the excellent posts that have been uh, made in this thread. I'm, again, I'm gonna link it down below. You need to go check it out if you have not. Um, this is where I think the future 
the future of our understanding and the future of our results is going to come from. And I will do a video on this as soon as possible when I can make one that does justice to the excellent research that people here have been posting. Okay, that's everything for today. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, uh, comment, and send this, these type of videos around to other people or post them in groups. I, I've been posting a lot in Facebook groups and you know in social media in general, but I don't want to spam them. So I, w I won't be posting every video that I make going forward. Um, but if you think a video is worth sharing with somebody, uh, please do so. Uh, thank you.